All right. Now, if you're under 50, you can participate in this quiz. Does anybody know who that actor standing over Jesus was? Anybody? Under 50. <laughs> who was it? Sidney Poitier. Sidney Poitier in 19... This movie... Uh, was George Stevens, uh, The Greatest Story Ever Told. Can you imagine Hollywood thinking at the beginning of 1965, okay, we're going to set the budget for all the studios this year, and we're going to spend the most money all year. We're going to make a movie about Jesus, okay? Boy, have we come a long way since 1965. But Sidney Poitier gets 39 seconds in this film where he plays Simon of Cyrene. He does it for nothing. In fact, he had about 45 minutes that was cut out of the film. But just a year before, Sidney Poitier won the best male actor in the Academy Award for his movie, Lilies of the Valley. Uh, can you imagine now today an actor climbing over a top of another actor to be involved in a story about Jesus? Hallelujah. I believe that's coming back to this nation. Amen. We're going to talk today about Simon of Cyrene. And for one brief moment, he is caught in the middle of canceled culture, right? He's, he's, he's right next to Jesus. He's touching Jesus. He's got the cross, the patibulum in which Jesus was struggling to carry on the way to Golgotha. You see, 250 years before this, Ptolemy, the Roman dictator, he kicks all the Jews out of Egypt and sends them to Libya or the Cyrenian area. And so these Jews have been there, and, and they formed their own culture and their own language, 100,000 of them. But there's a Cyrenian temple, a Jewish temple in Jerusalem, and uh, every single year, thousands of them migrate from eastern Libya all the way to Jerusalem. And so Simon of Cyrene is there this year with his two sons. And it's amazing in this scripture in Mark chapter 15 where it talks about him uh, being ordered or commanded to take up the cross. This Jewish man who had come all the way over for the festival and had heard this Jesus and now was drawn in just like hundreds of thousands of other people that had heard Jesus preach and minister in Judea. And now he gets there and he's now being asked to take this place at the fifth point of what we call the, the, uh, the Via Della Rosa or the way to the cross. And he's asked to take the, 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 uh, the cross from Jesus. Now, this is really interesting because it calls him out by name and it calls out the names of his two sons, Rufus and Alexander. Anytime you see this, now this is all three accounts of this are in the Synoptic Gospel. That's Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Or the eyewitness accounts here, they are, they, when you see that in the Word of God, plant yourself for a moment there and find out why is that so significant that they went all the way to give their names and, and, and maybe some of their legacy. It may open up a treasure trove for you and I when we study the Bible. And here's what we find. We find later on as Paul's writing uh, in his book to the Romans that we find out that Rufus, the son of uh, Simon de Cyrene, is now ministering to the Romans there at the church. We also find other exploits of Alexander as well. And in Interesting enough, in Acts chapter 11, when Stephen goes to Antioch to preach the gospel, the Bible says that a bunch of Cyrenian Jews come to a saving knowledge of Jesus radically and are preaching the gospel and winning Greek Hellenists over to them. And a lot of the legwork for Stephen has already been done. Can you imagine who might be at the head of this uh, the, the, the Cyrenian Christian that is leading this group of converted Jews into revival into Antioch. Probably no one other than Simon of Cyrene himself. You see, he got to see it firsthand. While all other disciples had left, Simon of Cyrene saw it firsthand. He got the blood of Jesus all over his body from carrying that cross. I laughed, uh, kind of chuckled a little bit when I saw that 1965 movie. Because as I was watching it, the Holy Spirit was saying, uh, I felt like Jesus was saying, son, I wish it was only that little amount of blood that I had on me. <laughs> By the time Jesus reached this point where he had to have the cross taken from him, the Bible says when he hung there, he was hardly recognizable. He had been beaten and severely, uh, his, that crown of thorns was, was bleeding all over him. I wish he was that clean in that moment. But you know, the lesson of Simon Cyrene is the amazing legacy, not only 
of himself, of, of the things that he had done in his lifetime and the legacy of his two sons. You know, who wouldn't want to live that life when we start out? I look at that and I say, that's where I want my children. I want that set of them. I would hope that my exploits during the years that I have on the earth and the years that I have in ministry are as exemplary as Simon of Cyrene. Do you know 2,000 years ago, uh, still to this day, do you know what the greatest in all of the United Kingdom, that's England, Ireland, Wales, you know what the greatest ministry to the homeless, to the disenfranchised, to figuring out ways for those that are on the street to get a, a, a life back of dignity? You know what that's called in the United Kingdom? That's called the Simon community. The, the uh, Cyrenian movement is this whole network named after Simon and Cyrene 2,000 years ago. How many of you would you like your name carried 2,000 years from now to be associated with generosity, self-sacrifice, just as he displayed on that fifth moment at the point on the way to the cross and yet have that in our life today. That's where I want to sign up for that. I want some of that. You know, it's amazing that Jesus in, in uh, Luke chapter 9, he foretells of this moment with Simon. Because when he's asking the disciples, who do men say that I am? He's, they're kind of quoting him all these things and Peter gets it right, right? Right after that moment, he says, well, if you're going to believe that, then there's going to be moments where you've got to take up your cross daily and you're going to have to follow after me. It's interesting in Luke's description of this moment. It says that Simon picked up the patibulum and carried it behind and walked behind Jesus all the way to the hill of Golgotha. Jesus prophesied this own moment. He knew. This wasn't a surprise to Jesus. He knew that. He was picked out of the crowd probably because it was the, 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 the centurions recognized that, hey, this man, this man must love them. To get this close while all the other believers had fled, this man was up to investigate. There must have been sympathy on his face. I believe that with all my heart as I read the scripture. Thank God for men like this to challenge us with their generosity, that it would live in a legacy that we can still carry today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful Easter season. Father, in a canceled culture 2,000 years ago, we find one of the most precious stories in all the Bible. Lord, that challenges us today. And as Lord, as Simon gave, of his life, of his sons, of his legacy, of his generosity. I want to say yes to that today, Lord. Father, do that work in us and the church that we might establish the kingdom of God right here in the San Fernando Valley in the desperate city of Los Angeles that needs a touch from God right now. And we thank you for all those that give today that are part of this church. You'd bless them abundantly with all that you have given them. Let them sow that back just like Simon did in that day to the kingdom of God. We hope you enjoyed that video. We're always posting new content, so go ahead and click the subscribe button now to subscribe to Every Nation City Church channel. God bless you.